Hola, como estas? This is and I am Ben Around the World. And I'm currently coming at you from my studio apartment here in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. It's another beautiful day. It's approximately 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if you guys know this, but it gets pretty warm here in Mexico. And I originally was going to shoot today's video from up top on my rooftop patio, but there is a lot of traffic today and it's got it's pretty noisy. So instead, I came into my apartment and uh, currently lying in bed. You know, I'm lying in bed, I haven't shaved today, but uh, you know what, guys, it's my channel. I do what I want. In today's episode, we're going to have a very special story time corner with your boy, Ben Around the World. And I'm going to tell you the incredible true story of how I went from being just an ordinary person to becoming a permanent world traveler. Buckle up, it's kind of a wild ride. Now, the story starts a few years ago when my life used to be normal. Super normal. So boring. I was at work, I was on my way to my lunch break, and I was going to visit the deli that I had visited a thousand times on my lunch break. And I was going to order the same thing that I had ordered every day for the last billion days at that deli on my lunch break. And as I arrived to the deli, uh, I see that they were had the streets blocked off. At the time, downtown Buffalo, where I'm from, they were shooting one of the Purge movies. Now, if you're familiar with the Purge movies, the you know one day out of the year you get to lie, cheat, steal, kill, murder, set things on fire, or whatever, and it's a-ok. -okay. They were shooting one of those movies there, and uh, the scene they were shooting was just like this big, like riot scene and they had the streets blocked off and everything. And I I was a little ticked at first. I was like, how dare they? How dare they prevent me from going to the deli that I like to visit and ordering the same thing every day? But then instead of uh, seeing a negative, I decided to see a positive. And I saw an opportunity. You know, they were shooting a riot scene, and so there's a lot of things going on. And even though the streets were blocked off and barricaded, I thought to myself, I bet you I can sneak onto this movie. I bet you, I bet you I can find a part in this movie. I can get into it. So I try to break on set. And then security catches me. And security was about to eject me off the premises. But with a little talking, a little smoothing over, a little finagling, you know, the security guards decide that, yeah, you know what? They're shooting a riot scene. And this kid clearly embraces anarchy and chaos. He would be perfect. But first, he needs to go through makeup and wardrobe. So they send me to uh, makeup and wardrobe, and everybody involved in the scene, it's a riot scene, and the, uh, they, all have, they have to look kind of like bummy, run down, like low income, you know, from the streets kind of feel. And I was coming from work, you know, I do like manual labor at the time, and they were like, you know what, you're perfect, you already look like crap. You don't need any makeup or anything, you're good to go. So. I spent uh, two days shooting on this movie set. Uh, I had the opportunity to spend more days shooting on the movie set, but I did have a flight leaving two days later to go to Florida to visit my sister, and my flight left on Friday the 13th. I don't know if you know this, but sometimes flights can be cheaper on Friday the 13th because people don't like flying on Friday the 13th. Just a little bit of uh, knowledge for you. So. Two days on a Hollywood movie set, and I meet just some of the most amazing people. Um, I met my friend Anthony. He's a graphic designer, artist. He's going to be helping me with some of the, the graphics involved in my channel. I met my friend Heather, who's still in Buffalo, currently involved in just so many different productions in the Buffalo, New York area. Just super driven and talented. And um, also met, Mo well, not most important, but most important to this story, I met my friend Anna, uh, an aspiring actress, model, uh, Filipino-American, and, um, you know, we hit it off, and she tells me, you know, um, I'm from the Philippines, I have a lot of family there, I have a summer vacay home in the Philippines, and, you know, you should come with me sometime, I'll take you to the Philippines, and it'll be great. And uh, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. At the time she told me all this, I'm like, there's no way that's going to happen. You know, she's just trying to sound impressive. She's just trying to, you know, win me over, whatever. 
So I'm like, there's no way. There's no way that's ever going to happen. She's never going to whisk me off to the Philippines or anything like that. So, so then she takes me to the Philippines. And um, talk about a life-changing experience. Just simply amazing. I had never really done a whole lot of traveling before. Uh, I had been to a destination wedding in Jamaica once. But it was on an all-inclusive resort and... You never really leave the resort. So like, yeah, you're in Jamaica, but you don't get to see, you don't get to experience the country. And so I'm hanging out in the Philippines and I'm with the locals, the people who know, you know? So they take me around. We do island hopping. We do, we do everything, snorkeling, you know, zip lines, just, just all this wild stuff. And it's, I gotta tell you, it was, a life-changing experience. It, it made me realize how limited my worldview was. It made me realize how very little of the world I had seen. And, and it's, it sparked something inside me. And, you know, I, while I was out there, I met her family, um, and her four cousins, um, beautiful uh, cousins that came along with us for the ride, and we all just hung out together. And I just... I knew, I knew that I had to see more of the world. So I go back to America and I, I start, you know, trying to come up with a plan. I'm like, I, I got to see more of the world. I got to, I got to go more vacations, visit more countries. And I had a friend who lived in Shanghai, China. Uh, my friend Julia, who, you know, we used to live together a billion, billion years ago when we were younger. And she's still a good friend of mine and she lived in Shanghai, China. And I inquired about coming out to China and Shanghai and, and visiting her and spending a little time out there. And um, that's when COVID happened. You know, the COVID came around, started spreading around China, and I had decided, you know, maybe China's just not the place to be right now. And so I was kind of bummed out. You know, I, I tried setting up another uh, visit to a country I'd never been. And before I was even able to get it off the ground, it all started falling apart. And uh, my friend Anna, you know, who had taken me to the Philippines, we had had sort of a falling out and we hadn't talked to each other in a while. But, you know, I reached out. I wanted to see how she was doing, make sure she was okay. And then we, you know, she told me that we should hang out. So I hung out with my friend Anna and she mentioned that she was going back to the Philippines and that I should go with her. And that her, you know, her cousins, her four cousins that we had hung out with, you know, were entertained by my presence. Um, somewhat of a novelty down there, I guess. And, you know, they love to see me again and we should all hang out again. So, I went back to the Philippines and returned to the Philippines. And, you know, my f the very first night, the very first night there on my return trip to the Philippines, I had found out that my good friend Anna and her entire family had been conspiring behind my back to set me up and arrange a courtship between me and uh, one of her cousins um, with the ultimate goal of us, you know, living happily ever after, walking hand in hand into the sunset, that sort of thing. And she was beautiful, she was beautiful. Uh, amazing, smart, successful, um, not as funny as me, not as funny as me, but very few people often are, so I won't hold that against her. And, you know, that's just an amazing opportunity. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to commit to, like, living happily ever after, you know, right away. You know, I had, didn't know her all that well, kind of just met her, but, you know, we talked it over, and I told her that... Um, I had did have to go back home to America, but that I would make arrangements to return to the Philippines in November, and I would be there for four months. And in that four months, um, you know, we would spend time together, hang out, get to know each other. And at the end of the four months, if she wanted me to stay, I would stay. Or if she wanted me to go back to America, I would go back to America. Now, I'm going to be Honest with you, I had already made up my mind. I know an amazing opportunity when I see it, but I didn't want her to feel pressured by her family to, you know, make a decision and to jump into something unless she wanted to. So 
I returned to America and started making arrangements for a semi, semi-permanent visit back to the Philippines to see her. And then that's when COVID hit the Philippines. And the Philippines and basically all of Southeast Asia completely shut down and became completely unavailable to me. Uh, but even still, at the time, I thought it was just a temporary thing. And I thought, oh, you know, this whole thing will blow over. I need to continue moving forward with my plan. So I make the arrangements, uh, you know, which includes having to leave my job that I worked at for a billion years, leave my home that I, at the time, was very close to paying off and getting new occupants inside the apartment in the house that I was living in. And the more I started moving forward with my plan, the more I realized I don't think the Philippines is going to let me in, or at least not anytime soon. So there I was, Buffalo, New York, practically jobless and homeless, and I had decisions that needed to be made. And while I was doing my homework and my research about relocating to the Philippines, that's when I started watching like other travel videos about people who, not just relocating to a country, but traveling and you know living the uh, i'm sure you've heard the term the the nomadic the digital nomadic life and that became very very appealing to me and i do still have the ultimate goal of returning to the philippines and you know in a perfect world i convince the the girl down there to you know come with me on my adventure and we sail off into the sunset together um but until i can make it back to the philippines that I would move around to different countries every few months and I would get to meet people, get to know people and if I could, you know, make the world a better place by helping people, by bringing people together and potentially, you know, uh, bridging cultural gaps and, you know, bringing about a little bit of peace if I can. So, and that brings me to today. I. I'm in Playa del Carmen. This is my very first uh, stop on my world adventure, and I have no regrets. And it's it's amazing because this whole thing started off with me just having a normal day. I mean, a normal day that I had lived a billion times over, and just going on my lunch break. And I was presented with an opportunity, and one thing led to another, led to another. You know, the butterfly effect. And here I am. And if this story has any lesson, any takeaway, is that life will present you with opportunities. You have to be smart enough, you have to be observant enough to see those opportunities when they come by you. Because they might not always be super evident. You know, those opportunities might always be presented to you on a silver platter. But if you keep an open mind, you keep an open heart, you will see them as they come by. You will travel through life and you will come through, come by certain doorways and you have to make the decision to cross that threshold and to go through them. So, just keep that in mind, folks. Any day, any moment has the opportunity to change your entire life. You just have to let it happen and you have to make it happen. So, I do believe that's all the time we have for today. This is Better Around the World signing off. As always, reminding you to love yourself and someone else. Adios.